for watching. And today I want to give you a very neat result that relates the dimension of the sum of two subspaces with the dimension of each subspace. So let me just recall some notation. So here W and Z are subspaces of a vector space V. of V, and for this video we assume that V is finite dimensional. So the dimension of V is finite, and also the dimension of the subspaces is also finite. Then, what does it mean to take the sum of subspaces? Well, very simple, you just take the sum of each element in the subspace. So it's just uh, the set of sums, little w plus little z, where little w is in w and little z is in z. So, for example, if w is the x-axis in R2 and z is the y-axis in R2, then the sum of it, it's the whole plane, because if you just take arbitrary sums of vectors here, then you really get any vector in that plane. So w plus z. So it's kind of like a linear combination, except we're not uh, multiplying by a scalar. We're simply taking the sum of the two. And here is our very neat result. So it turns out that sums kind of behave like unions in the following sense. What we will show is the dimension of the sum is the sum of the dimensions plus dimension of z minus the dimension of the intersection. Okay. And if you know set theory, this should remind you a lot about the formula for unions because A union B, how many elements does it have? So suppose this is A and this is B. Well, we're counting the number elements of A and adding the number of elements in B. But then the problem is we're kind of double counting the number of elements in A intersect B, so we're just subtracting it. And notice how similar it is to this statement. And in fact, this is how you can also generalize the formula for the dimension of three sums of subspaces. Just by using the definition of the uh, number of uh, elements in the union of three sets. Okay, and how do we show this? It's very, very neat. It's like one of the beautiful results in linear algebra. First, we will start with the basis for this that set. So let, um, let's call this V1. I guess V1 up to uh, Vn be a basis of W intersect Z, okay. where what is N? N is just by definition the dimension of this thing, so W intersect Z. So, um, and in fact, this will be very important. So we have, on the one hand, our subspace W, on the other hand, our subspace Z, and we found a basis of W intersect Z. So V1 up to Vn. So this is W intersect Z. And what we want to do, here's an interesting thing. Because on the one hand, we have a basis of this set. So it is linearly independent. Right? But this subset, on the one hand, it's a linearly independent subset of W. So one thing we can do, we can extend it to a basis of W. So extend, let's say V1 up to Vn, to a basis, let's say V1 up to Vn, and then W1 up to W, let's say, M minus N of W. So in other words, let's add a couple more vectors. So this thing. 
W1 up to Wm minus n. And why did I do, why did I use m minus n? Well, if you add the n vectors with the m minus n vectors, you get m vectors. So m is the dimension of w. Okay. So this is good. On the other hand, well, this is also a linearly independent subset of z. So we can extend it to a basis of z. So let's add some other vectors. So z1 up to, which one did I not use? k, like zk minus n. So also extend this set, v1 up to vn, to a basis. Let's say V1 up to Vn, Z1 up to Zk minus n of Z. And notice how many vectors does that have? n plus k minus n, which is k. Dimension of Z. Now that's good. We get a basis of W, we get a basis of Z. And then, here's my claim. If you put all of them together, and remember, W plus Z is kind of like a union of subspaces, even though technically the union itself is not a subspace, but the sum is. And uh, strictly speaking, uh, um, because it behaves like a union, you may guess that if you put all of them together, you actually get a basis for the sum. So here's our claim, maybe here. If you put all of them together, V1 up to Vn, W1 up to Wm minus n, and Z1 up to Zk minus n, we claim that this is a basis of the sum of the two. And in fact, um, I'm claiming this is enough for, to, for proof because then we're actually done. Because how do you find the dimension? You just find the um, number of elements in a basis. So what is then the dimension of W plus C? Well, let's count how many there are. Here we have n vectors plus n minus n plus k minus n. And one of the n's cancelled out, and we get m plus k minus n. But what was m? m was the dimension of w. You know, n plus m minus n, which is m, so dimension of w. k was the dimension of z. And what was n? It's the dimension of the intersection. And then we would be done. So let's get this bread. Let's just show that this is true. So first of all, let's show it spans. So let V be in W plus Z. Then V is the sum of two elements, little w and little z, where w is in w and z is in z. But look, we know that W, a basis for W, it's V1 up to Vn, up to W1 up to Wn minus n. So we know that W, it's A1 V1 plus dot 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 plus A n V n plus, I guess, uh, A n minus n plus 1 W1 plus dot 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 plus A m W m minus n. And similarly for z, so we know that z is somewhere in here, so it's in the span of the vi and zj. So this is, if you want, v1 v1 plus dot 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 plus bn vn plus uh, bn plus 1, z1 plus dot 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 plus 
B, sorry, uh, BK, ZK minus N. And again, that's since V1 up to Vn, W1 up to Wn minus N is a basis of W, and the other set is a basis of Z. V1 up to Vn, Z1 up to Zk minus N, it's a basis of Z. Particular they span, and I'm claiming, well, I know we have a big sum, but we can just write this in terms of our vectors here, because just put all the vi's together. So this is really uh, a1 plus b1, v1 plus dot 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 plus an plus bn, vn plus an plus 1, w1 plus am, wm minus n plus uh, b1, z1. So Bn plus 1, Z1 plus dot 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 plus Bk, Zk minus N. And that is indeed in the span of this huge set. V1 up to Vn, uh, W1 up to Wm minus N, Z1 up to Zk minus N. So this spans, so we're good. Good, and again, it shows a straightforward uh, application of the definition of sum of two things. Okay, and then lastly, for this video, we just need to show it's linearly independent. And this is also quite beautiful. kind of like flows like milk and honey, you will see. So, for linear independence, suppose some linear combo gives you zero. So, A1, uh, V1, plus dot dot dot, plus An, Vn, plus, let's say, B1, W1, plus dot dot dot, plus B1, uh, Bm, uh, Bm minus N. Wm minus n plus C1, Z1, plus that, 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 plus C, K minus n, Z, K minus n equals zero. And then let's uh, uh, rearrange some things. So let's put, you'll see why we do that. Uh, let's put this together and then this on the other side. So A1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n plus b1 w1 plus b m minus 1 uh, w m minus n equals minus c1 z1 dot 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 minus c k minus n z k minus n. Now, why did I do that? Look at this term. See? All those terms are in W. The VIs are in W. The WJs are in W. So because it's a subspace, the whole thing is in W. So we know this vector, a priori, is in W. But look, what about this thing here? This thing is purely stuff in Z, so it's actually also in Z. So we have something quite interesting we have that this vector, it's both in W and in Z. Look at this element. On the one hand, it's in Z, but also equals to something that's in W. So this thing is actually both in Z and in W. So it's in the intersection. So minus C1, Z1, dot, 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 minus CK minus 1, ZK minus N. It's in W intersect Z. But we know that this one has a nice basis. It's just V1 up to Vn. So in particular, this vector here, this pure linear combo of Zks, it's actually equal to, I don't know, D1 V1 
plus dot 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 plus d n v n. Now put everything on the right hand side. We get d one v one plus dot 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 plus d n v n plus c one z one dot 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 plus c k minus n z k minus n equals zero. But look at this. It's very beautiful because we're introducing those constants. But turns out we don't need them because look, this whole set is linearly independent. So we can conclude that actually all those constants are zero. So d1 equals zero, dinosaur equals zero, dn, c1 equals zero, ck minus n equals zero. So that's already very good because basically what this tells us is in this expression, this whole thing disappears because all the constants are zero. And then we have something quite nice because we get that this thing is zero, because the tail is zero here, and we also know that v1 up to vn, w1 up to wn minus n, we're back in w land, we know those are linearly independent. And therefore what we get is a1 equals zero, a n equals zero, b one equals zero, up to b n minus one equals zero. And again, that's because v one up to v n, uh, w one up to w n minus n is a basis. In this case, of w. And therefore, putting everything together, we get. All the ai's are zero, all the bj's are zero, and all the ck's are zero. And therefore, since all the constants are zero, we get that this whole linear combo is just a trivial linear combo, and therefore we get that that set is linearly independent. And therefore we have this uh, consequence about the dimensions of the sum, which is pretty neat. Um, in particular, if the intersection is just trivial, it means that the dimension of the sum is the sum of the dimensions, which happens, for example, when we have direct sums, uh, which I have another video on, if you're interested. Um, all right, so that's it for today. Um, if you're interested in this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.